What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this video, we have the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 front suspension. Available for 14 to 22 touring models and 100% manufactured and assembled right here in the USA, this 49 millimeter cartridge system features adjustment knobs or clickers that are top mounted and external for easy dampening adjustment. A massive one piece inch and three quarter shock body for added oil volume and better stability. A nitrogen charged internal floating piston, monotube design. And quality custom eye box springs that are precision tuned to reduce front end dive, providing better braking control. So changing the front suspension not only makes the bike handle better, but gives you the rider a much smoother and enjoyable ride. In a previous video, I did an install on the RS1 shocks in the rear. I've been riding on those for about a year now and they've been great. Now I've been waiting to get my hands on these for quite some time now. So let's get them unboxed and install on the bike. So pretty simple, you get your two new cartridges, some new fork oil and instructions. And for 17s and up, you're gonna reuse your stock drop spring. And for 14 to 16, they're gonna provide you with a spacer and new drop spring. So these cartridges come preset from the factory. So there's no adjusting your preload. All your adjustments are made on the top with these clickers and they come set all the way to the left. And then from there, you can go and ride it and then click it to the right to adjust for your riding style. Now for this plastic sleeve on the outside of the spring, this is to protect the spring and to protect the tube because most springs over time, they'll start to bow and they'll start to rub on the side of the tube. So it's great that they thought about this and put this plastic sleeve on here so it protects the spring and it protects your tube. All right guys, so these are the tools that I use for this install. I know that most of these tools are specialty tools and you don't really need them but I like to have them just because it makes the job easier and I know I'm gonna do this more than once. So I did use a vise that rotates and spins, just makes the job a little easier when it's only one person. A foot pound torque wrench, inch pound torque wrench, a ratchet, smaller ratchet, flathead screwdriver, a couple picking tools, some blue Loctite, spanner wrench, rubber mallet. I did use the Motion Pro 49 millimeter fork seal driver. I used the Jim's fork clamp some Annecy's lubricant. Russ Wearmont Designs did provide me with the fork oil 10 weight. This comes in the kit. A measuring cup, a funnel, a couple rags, brake cleaner. I did purchase the Drag Specialties Rebuild Kit from Get Lowered Cycles. It will come with some extra parts and stuff like that that you won't need for this install, but it might be different for yours. A couple covers for your brake calipers just to keep them protected. 13 millimeter wrench. 10 millimeter wrench. I do have the extended 12 millimeter hex bit, 24 millimeter socket, a 12.10 millimeter socket, a 19 millimeter hex bit, a couple of adapters for the torque wrenches, two inch extension, quarter inch hex bit, six millimeter hex bit, 330 seconds hex bit, and a T25. So I did purchase the Motion Pro Pro Forco level tool. I wanted to try this out. I saw a lot of great reviews on it as far as getting your levels correct when you're pouring in your fork oil. But for the Russ Wearmont Designs cartridges, they only require you to pour in six ounces of fluid into each one. So it makes it pretty simple. I didn't get to use this tool, so maybe on the next one. All right guys, so for this install, I am using my lift and my center jack, but obviously you can use a regular jack. Just make sure you have everything strapped down and you have that rear tire supported or it's sitting on the ground, because when you do take that front wheel off, a lot of weight's gonna be put on the back and you don't want your bike to fall over on you. So first thing I'll do is remove the instrument bezel. I'll start off by removing the ignition switch cover. Now you can remove the ignition switch knob, but I found that you can remove this whole bezel without removing it. So on the bottom of the ignition switch cover, there's a little notch, just push into there. There's a little retention clip and this cover will come right off. Now you can use a flathead screwdriver, but here I'm using a picking tool. So here's that notch where you're pushing in. 
for this little retention clip. So you just push on that and it'll pop right off. Now I'll remove the screws on each side of the bezel and I'm using a T25 with an extension. And now I'll pull back on the instrument bezel to disconnect the connectors. And as you can see, it goes right past that knob. So you can use a tank cover, but I'm just using a microfiber towel just to protect the paint. So here you have your three connectors. You have one in the middle that controls your speedometer and your tachometer. You can use a picking tool or a screwdriver to pop that off. And then you have two on the bottom. So now I'll remove my front fender. I do have the 19 inch wrap front fender from Hogworks. So I have a bolt with a spacer and a nut on the back. So I'm using a six millimeter hex bit and a 13 millimeter wrench. So now I'll remove the brake calipers on each side and you have two 12 point bolts and I'm using a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. Once I get the brake caliper off, I'll just put it inside this bag and I'll hang it from the turn signal so it's not hanging from the brake lines. So when removing your left brake caliper, you do have your WSS cable here, which is your wheel speed sensor. And then you have this wire guide here. So when you remove these two bolts, just make sure you don't lose that. Now before I can remove the front tire, I have to remove my axle nut covers. And if you have axle nut covers and you also have set screws, just be careful with those because they do tend to strip out. So keep track of the wheel speed sensor and the spacer on the other side and which way they're orientated because you want to install them the same way. So I'll break the axle nut loose first and then I'll raise the bike. And if you have your bike strapped down, just make sure you're keeping them tight. So I'll loosen up this bottom pin screw on the right side. I won't take it out just yet so I can get the axle out. So I'm using a rubber mallet to knock the axle through. Just keep track of your spacers and your wheel speed sensor. Here I'm just using a tool to knock it through the rest of the way. And on this side, I'm just using a screwdriver to pull it out the rest of the way. And now from here, I can go ahead and remove the tire. Since I'm only doing one side at a time, I'll reinstall the axle. That way, when I'm loosening up the pinch bolts on the top, the fork doesn't slide down on me. So now I'll loosen up these pin screws that are clamping down on the fork. You have one on the top and then you have these two bottom ones here and because I have the axle in place, the fork shouldn't slide down on me. And to loosen up these pin screws, I'm using a quarter inch hex bit. So while holding on to the fork, I'll remove the axle and then just ease it out. So I'll finish removing this pinch screw. Now from here, I'll remove this screw on the bottom of the fork. This acts as a drain plug. It's also holding on to some components inside the tube. And for this, I'm using an extended 12 millimeter hex bit. So with the rebuild kit, I did get a new screw and a copper washer. Just make sure when you pull out this screw that you get out that copper washer. So here I'm using a gems tool. Your vise just clamps down on this. All this is is a fork holder and it did come with a sleeve to protect the tube. So now that I removed the screw and the copper washer, I'm gonna drain the fork oil. I'll slowly pump the fork tube and slider about 10 times. Then I'll give it about 10 to 15 minutes to drain completely. So just know when you're removing this fork tube plug that it is under pressure. So when you do release it, it is gonna pop up. I'm gonna show you a little trick I learned uh, just wrapping a towel around it 
it'll keep it under pressure and then using the tool to loosen it up and then the towel should just catch it. And to remove this fork tube plug, I'm using a 19 millimeter hex bit. So just make sure when you're loosening this up that you have a good grip on it. So you have your fork tube plug and here we have our sleeve and here I'm just using a picking tool to get out that spacer and then you have your spring so just know there is going to be oil on this when you pull it out so if you don't want to make a mess you can put a bag over it and then pull it out So now that I have those components out, I'll go ahead and remove the damper tube and the rebound spring. Now to remove this fork tube and completely disassemble it, I have to remove this retaining clip. So here I'm just using a screwdriver. You have a notch on your retaining clip. You just pry up on that and it should just pop right out. Now I'll just expand the fork slider and fork tube against each other until I get it to release. So just a quick tip for this fork tube plug, if you are reusing it, obviously for this install, we're not gonna be reusing this. So this is just if you're doing a fork oil change, what I like to do is just set this in here and I'll find where it starts to thread. So right about there is where it starts to come out and it starts to thread. So what I'll do is I'll mark this and I'll mark this. That way when this is under pressure, it's a lot easier to get this lined up and then you push down and then you can get it to thread. So I did purchase a rebuild kit from Get Lowered Cycles. This is the Drag Specialties Rebuild Kit for your 49mm fork sliders for 14s and up. So after you remove the retaining clip and you get your tube to release from the fork slider, you have your lower stop, your fork tube bushing, your slider bushing, your slider spacer, and then your seal. So if you are gonna reuse your stock bushings and spacer, you just wanna make sure you inspect the outside of the bushing and then the inside of the slider bushing. You just wanna make sure that the coating is not worn through and there's no metal showing. So here's a good example of some wear and being able to see past the coating and seeing metal. And this is your new one. And obviously you can tell the difference. All right, so from here, I'm just gonna clean out the tube with some brake cleaner and just flush everything out. So now that I have the tube cleaned up, I'll reinstall the bushings and the spacer. So I'll coat the slider bushing and the fork tube bushing with some clean fork oil. And the same thing goes for the seal. Now with this seal, you have this metal ring on the inside. You want this side down. Now if you apply enough fork oil to the seal, you can definitely slide it through the bottom. Just make sure you're taking your time so you don't damage it. So with this fork tube bushing, you just wanna expand it just enough so it slips into the groove of the fork tube. All right guys, so now that we have everything cleaned up, I have the new seal, spacer, and bushings installed. The only stock internals you're gonna keep are the rebound or drop spring. Then you have your lower stop. And then the rebuild kit did come with a new retaining clip, but you could use the old retaining clip if it's still in good shape. And as far as sealing everything up, I am gonna use the Motion Pro 49 millimeter fork seal driver. This is the Ringer. 
Uh, great tool, it's heavy duty. There are some other ones on Amazon that are plastic and some other metal ones, but they're pretty cheap and they break really easy. Or there are other videos out there that you can make your own, but I like spending money on good tools. So I went ahead and purchased this one. So how everything is gonna sit inside your tube, you have your rebound spring or your drop spring. It's gonna sit inside like that. And then you have your lower stop. It's gonna sit on the end just like that. So it'll cup it around your cartridge. So when you put everything in here, you take your lower stop. I'm gonna put it in before I put it inside the fork slider. It's gonna sit in just like that. It'll drop in there. And then I'll drop this inside the tube and then I'll drop in the cartridge. So all I'm gonna do is just take something to protect the bottom and I'll set this down here so I can drive the seal. Just make sure you remove anything off the table so it doesn't go flying on you. So you just wanna drive your bushings and your seal down far enough where you can see that ring or that slot where the retaining clip's supposed to sit. So now I'll just put on the retaining clip. Just start off from this back side here where it's not open. Hold your finger there with some pressure and then just close these. You can use a flat hitch screwdriver if you need to, but should just be able to pop it in. Now I'll just take a screwdriver and set it into place. So before I install the new cartridge system, I'm just gonna make sure that the fork tube can move freely without any friction or binding. So for the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 cartridge system, there is no rebound or compression side. They both act as one, so you don't have to worry about which one goes in what tube. But if you are doing a different suspension that calls for a rebound and compression side, just make sure you're putting the right cartridge in the right tube. Now for the preload, it's already set from factory. You can make all your adjustments from up here. So just inspect your cartridge system before you drop it in. And with the rebuild kit, I'll test this screw just to make sure that it threads in. And just give it a good wipe down. So before I slide in my new RS1 cartridge into the fork tube, I'll drop in my stock drop spring or rebound spring. So now I'll just apply some pressure compressing the top out spring and thread the top cap of the cartridge into the fork tube. Just take your time when you're threading this so you're not cross threading. And it might take you some time to find that sweet spot where it starts to thread. Now the rebuild kit does come with a new seal, but this cartridge system already had one installed. Now to finish threading this top cap on, I am using a spanner wrench now they do have a quarter inch spanner wrench that they recommend. This is the one I had laying around. It is a little big for these holes here, but I'll see if I can get it to work. I do have some painter's tape wrapped around it so I don't scratch this up or mar it up. So there's no torque spec on these. You just wanna tighten it down until it stops and it's nice and snug. Now for most suspension systems, you're gonna put in your fork oil through the top and then thread in your top cap but for the Russ Wearmont designs, we're gonna flip this one over and we're gonna fill it in through the bottom. Now they do provide you with the 10 weight fork oil in the kit and it's calling for six ounces. Now the instructions do not call for it, but I'm gonna give this a couple pumps just to get all those air bubbles out. So now I'll take my new screw and copper washer from the rebuild kit and I'll thread it in through the lower leg and into the cartridge system. So I'll push up on the tube so it's sitting on the bottom of the fork slider and I'll thread it in. And for this screw, it's calling for 28 foot pounds. And now I'll just take my lower fork leg pinch screw and thread this back in. All right guys, now that I replaced the right cartridge system, it's time to put it back on the bike.
And now I'll just take my axle and slide it in just to hold this fork into place. And sliding the axle in here not only helps you hold the fork into place, but helps you line everything up, get everything measured out so you can tighten it down. So for the top and the mid two pinch screws, it's calling for 14 to 18 foot pounds. So I'll tighten it down to 16. All right guys, so it's the exact same thing on the left side. I'll knock this one out real quick and then I'll throw the tire back on. So now that I have the new suspension installed and everything is lined up, even, and torqued down, I'll reinstall the tire. Just make sure when you're reinstalling your tire that this arrow is facing towards the direction of travel. And if you haven't already, this is a good time to inspect and clean your tire, like your brake disc and your bearings. Now before I reinstall the axle, I'll apply a light coat of anti-seize to the axle and the bearing bores. Now from here, I'll just lower the bike to get everything lined up. Just remember which way your spacer was facing. These groove lines on the diameter of the spacer were facing towards the fork. So for the wheel speed sensor, the spacer is gonna go towards the fork and your sensor is gonna go towards your brake disc. So just make sure when you're getting your axle through that you're not hitting the fork and damaging the threads. Now I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard that if you have this hole here on your axle facing up, you could possibly hear some whistling. I've never heard it before, but I like to keep this horizontal anyway because I do have axle nut covers and it helps that set screw set into place on the bottom. Now some people might do it differently but I just make sure that they're even on both sides. So I'll tighten down the axle pinch screw and it's calling for 18 to 22 foot pounds. So I'll tighten it down to 20. I'll reinstall the spacer and axle nut. Now before you tighten down your axle nut, take your wheel speed sensor and slide it up until it makes contact with the fork slider and then just back it off a little bit. I'll finish tightening down the axle nut. It's calling for 70 to 75 foot pounds. I'll tighten it down to 73. So now I'll reinstall the brake calipers. This is a good time to inspect them, check those brake pads to see if they need to be changed out. I would reference the service manual for your model for those regular service intervals. Also, while I have these off, I'll inspect them and clean them up. Now, sometimes you do have to use a screwdriver or a tool to pry open these brake pads and compress those pistons and order it for it to slide on your brake disc. But mine are open enough to get on there. So for your wheel speed sensor, this is your bracket. This helps it guide it away from the brake disc. You don't want to forget to install this.
Now the service manual doesn't call for it, but I would apply some blue Loctite. Now before I tighten these down, I'll get the other side installed and then I'll torque them down. So now I'll finish tightening these down. It's calling for 28 to 38 foot pounds. I'll tighten them down to 33. Now, after you reinstall your brake calipers, that goes for the front, or if you're doing the rear, you definitely wanna pump your brakes. You'll pull it back once, you'll see it goes straight back to the grip, and you'll just keep pumping them until it feels back to normal. So now I'll reinstall the axle nut covers. So with these axle nut covers, I like setting it with a set screw on the bottom. Now that I have everything installed, I'm gonna raise the bike some and just spin the wheel just to inspect everything and make sure it moves freely. And now I'll reinstall the front fender. So I do wish that the instrument bezel top cover here and this side were separate pieces. So anytime I wanted to adjust my clickers, I can do that. But as of now, I have to take off my instrument bezel anytime I want to adjust it. So I'll try to get it right the first time. And on this instrument bezel connectors, this right side is feeding through the right. This left side is feeding through the left. And then you have your center. These only go in one way, but the center connector does have a notch on the bottom and this will be on the bottom when you install it. And with these two instrument bezel screws, you wanna get them down finger tight first and then tighten them down. Now from here, I'll reinstall the ignition switch cover. Just make sure that it clicks in on the bottom. After you install your connectors, just turn the motorcycle on to make sure it's all connected correctly. All right guys, now that I have these installed, I'm gonna take it out on a ride, but before I try to go fast, I'm gonna take it really slow just to make sure that everything works. I did take everything off and put everything back on and did the correct torque specs, but I wanna make sure that everything functions correctly. Other than that guys, let's go. All right, so I only have uh, 10 miles of fuel left, so I'm gonna have to go get some gas. So as you can see, the ABS is flashing. This should go away after a little bit, uh, but if it doesn't, I'll just troubleshoot it and figure it out. All right, guys, so I have the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 front suspension installed. This is my initial review, and right off the bat, these things feel awesome. I've had the rears for quite some time now. Uh, I've had them for over a year and I have no complaints. They ride great, they feel great. I knew Russ Wearmont Designs had the front suspension, but they've been sold out for a while. They've been out of stock. But as soon as those things hit the shelf, I got one. So I'm glad I did, I'm glad I held out. I didn't want to mix match suspensions. Um, so I'm glad I kept up with it. A lot of times we change out the rear, but we forget about the front and it, it just, night and day compared to stock just the handling the turning i did take it down some back roads i uh, wanted to test everything out make sure everything functioned correctly i did get off the bike and uh inspected everything and this thing turning corners uh braking everything felt great anytime i braked it didn't just dive on me obviously this is my initial review i want to ride with these for about you know six months to a year and then give you a review on them after that um, I mean, it did, I haven't given my review on the rear shocks because I've been enjoying them so much that I just forgot. <laughs> uh, but you're getting it now. I've been riding with the RS1 rear suspension 
for over a year and they've been great no complaints um, the only thing is just make sure you set your sag when you are riding with weight because <laughs> you will you will feel it if you don't set your sag uh, those clickers are really easy to adjust so the only thing I don't like it has nothing to do with the suspension it has to do with the instrument bezel and the side cover here uh, the side cover it's all one piece so you can't really get behind there to adjust your clickers you do have to take the instrument bezel off now I can modify it and maybe cut it out a little bit so I can you know reach the clickers uh, but it takes like five minutes to take this thing off so it's not a big deal and once you get it set you really don't have to take it off anymore so that's the only complaint I had but it has nothing to do with the suspension it's really just the instrument bezel now Russ Wearmont Designs is fairly new to the Harley world uh, they've been doing suspension though and off-road racing for you know 30 plus years and on the RS1 shocks in the rear they teamed up with Walker Evans and you know that's 70 plus years of combined experience with dealing with suspension and uh, off-road racing and obviously you bring that to the Harley world and it's just gonna be you know they're just gonna blow it up so I'm looking forward to it well that's not good damn I know that feeling That's not good. Man, I hate when I see that. Sorry, it kind of threw me off, man. Whenever you see a down motorcycle, it kind of, you know, throws me off. But, uh, yeah, that's never good. I've been there, and it's not a great feeling. I hope he's all right, or she. So I've ridden with different suspensions before. Uh, great suspensions out there. Anything is better than stock. But right now, the Russ Wearmont Designs, they're knocking it out of the park with the fronts and the rear. So. Do I recommend the front suspension? Yes. Do I recommend the rear suspension? Yes. Now, obviously, this is all, you know, rider's preference. This is my personal opinion. You have to ride these to get the full experience. So, do I recommend them? I sure do. All right, guys. So, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to hit every single detail as far as taking the brakes off, taking the tire off, installing the suspension, and putting everything back on. So if you do like this video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed to the channel, I really do appreciate it. Other than that, guys, I'll see you on the next one.